She is the daughter of the last faithful king of Numenor. By rights, she should have become the fourth ruling queen of her people, but instead, she would be usurped by her cousin, Farazon. Today on Nerd of the Rings, we cover the life of Tar Miriel. Miriel is born in 3117 of the Second Age, in a Numenor that has already fallen far from the heights of its past. She is born to Tar Palantir, and in order to fully grasp the early life of the daughter, we will first take a look at the father. Tar Palantir is born to King Argimilzor, and is initially given the Adunaic name of Inzilidun. These Adunaic names had become customary in Numenor as they moved further and further in their hatred toward the Valar and Eldar, and turned toward evil ways. Despite being born to such a king, Inziladun is taught by his mother in Zilabeth the ways of the faithful, for she was secretly one of those who remained true to the Valar and Eldar. Upon his father's death in 3177, Inziladun seeks to repent of the ways of his forebears, taking his royal name in the elven tongue of Quenya as the great kings of old. Thus he becomes Tar Palantir, the far-sighted. 24th King of Numenor when Miriel is 60 years old. Like her father, Miriel is presumably taught the ways of the faithful. The king's gift of foresight shows him that should the white tree ever perish, the line of kings would come to an end. Thus, during his rule, the white tree of Nimloth is properly tended once more. However, all was not well in Numenor. There were still many among the king's men faction who rebelled against the king. They are led by Palantir's brother, Gimilkad, who had followed in the ways of their father. And upon Gimilkad's death, the mantle is taken up by his son, Farazon. Thus, during the 78-year reign of Tar Palantir, there was much strife and rebellion. And because Farazon had won great renown as a captain of both land and sea, and had brought back great wealth which he freely gave to the people, the hearts of the Numenorians were turned to Farazon. In 3255, it is said Tar Palantir grew weary of grief and died. And to Miriel now by right and the laws of the Numenorians came the scepter. But Farazon took her to wife against her will, doing evil in this and evil also in that the laws of Numenor did not permit the marriage, even in the royal house, of those more nearly akin than cousins in the second degree. And when they were wedded, he seized the scepter into his own hand, taking the title of Ar Farazon, and the name of his queen he changed to Ar Zimrafel. While forced to take an Adunaic name, the meaning remains the same. Jewel Daughter. While the most complete version of the story has this marriage being forced, it's interesting to note that in some of his earliest writings on the fall of Numenor, Tolkien had Miriel legitimately falling for Farazon. In these older notes, we have a description of Miriel as being a woman of great beauty and smaller in stature than most women of Numenor. We are also told that though she was older than Farazon by a year, she seemed younger. And though law forbade the marriage of cousins, and her father opposed it as well, Farazan's eyes are turned toward his cousin. In this text, Muriel is betrothed to a lord of Endunie named Elentir. However, Muriel becomes infatuated with Farazan, and when her father dies, she instead marries Farazan, voluntarily yielding the scepter to him. Obviously, this is nowhere near where the story ultimately went, but the drastic change in Muriel's character is an interesting part of the formation of the story. Returning to the tale we know from Tolkien's later writings, Tar Miriel would be the queen of Numenor during the reign of Ar Farazon, having been taken to wife against her will. Six years after Farazon seizes power, Miriel would bear witness to the coming of Sauron to the island realm, and her husband's further descent due to the influence of the Dark Lord. Sauron would convince the king to cut down the White Tree of Nimloth and burn it as a sacrifice in the newly built Temple of Melkor. As Muriel's father foresaw, 
The death of the White Tree would indeed foreshadow the end of the Kings of Numenor. Sauron would next convince an aging Arpharazon that he could conquer the undying lands of Valinor and take immortality by force. After nine years of preparations, Arpharazon and his massive fleet launch their attack upon Valinor. As Arpharazon reaches land and claims it for his own, the Valar call upon Iluvatar to intervene. And in that moment, the world is changed. Farazan and his soldiers are buried under falling hills, and the island realm of Numenor is taken by the sea. In the Silmarillion, we hear of the end of Numenor and the end of Tar Miriel. In an hour unlooked for by men, this doom befell on the nine and thirtieth day since the passing of the fleets. Then suddenly fire burst from the Menel Tarma, and there came a mighty wind and a tumult of the earth and the sky reeled, and the hills slid, and Numenor went down into the sea with all its children and its wives and its maidens and its ladies proud, and all its gardens and its halls and its towers, its tombs and its riches, and its jewels and its webs, and its things painted and carven, and its laughter and its mirth and its music, its wisdom, and its lore. They vanished forever. And last of all the mounting wave, green and cold and plumed with foam, climbing over the land, took to its bosom Tar Miriel the queen, fairer than silver or ivory or pearls. Too late she strove to ascend the steep ways of the Menel Tarma to the holy place for the waters overtook her, and her cry was lost in the roaring of the wind. Tar Miriel is lost with her realm to the sea. While it would be the end of Numenor, it would not be the end of their people. For those among the faithful, now led by a distant cousin of Miriel, would make their way to Middle-earth, founding new realms in exile. And next Saturday, we'll pick up with this very character as we cover the life of Elendil. As always, I want to say a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters who make this channel possible. Tom DeBombadil19, Listen Me the Cinda, Kella Brimbor, The Mighty Mim, Team Weasel, Rabbi Rob Thomas, Charles Leisure, Toby Mobs Music, Sky Carcass, Slide Belts, Dane Ragnarsson, Salim Rahman, Zetrock, Berto Berg, Grand Strategy Nerd, Graham Derricott, The Dark Haired One, Wyland, Michael Wu, and Debbie. If you enjoyed the artwork in this video, Check out the artists in the description and purchase prints of their great work for yourself. Thanks so much for watching and subscribing, and we'll see you next time on Nerd of the Rings.